You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. To it's all about you with your host, Dr. Martha Latz. Dr. Martha will offer various solutions that will expand your horizons, offer solid possibilities, and guide you through developing the skills needed for your desired outcome in everyday life. So now, please welcome the host of It's All About You, Dr. Martha Latz. Welcome, welcome. We are coming to you live from across the U.S. and around the world on BBM Global Network. Tune in and iHeartRadio. I am your host, Dr. Martha, and our show is It's All About You. And I'm so glad to be broadcasting live from the East Coast, where I have an office in South Florida. However, it remains closed. It's not, it's not open yet. But it's still there, and um, I have completely gone to phone sessions and uh, dealing with what we all are because of using Internet and everything, some difficulties and timing issues. But these are wild and wacky and wonky times for us all. As you know, my expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, transition, life, and relationship coach, and all things to do with social media, all forms of communication at work, personally, and um, how the platforms have changed for us with our co-workers as well as our family members, with Zoom meetings, uh, uh, family Zoom conferencing, boundaries at home and with our families and our friends have been challenged in all of our relationships. All of our relationships now look very, very different. Like, why during a pandemic is my relationship crumbling and I'm not, and really I don't have the energy to really care? Well, it's not that you don't care, but there's a whole lot. Our daily lives as well have been changing. And all, all I can say is that it continues to present challenges. Um, as we have all, as I have, as all of you for the last eight months, uh, to, to care about even one more thing or one more issue, just absolutely, we just seem to collapse in exhaustion. We have celebrated the most uncelebrated holidays for major life events, and there looks like it's going to continue for the uh, foreseeable future. So what do we have to look forward to? Well, what I've been hearing from the vast majority of you and um I think you all will agree, is that um, there's a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of stress. Um, making simple day-to-day decisions sometimes become very di- becomes very difficult. Um, you don't know what the boundaries are, or even if there are boundaries. Um, your relationships are disintegrating right before your eyes, and you're frozen in fl- place. And all I keep hearing is, I want my life back. And um, and I keep saying, well, it's good to want your life back, but your life is going to come back very differently. So perhaps I can help. You know, we can talk about this. Um, you can hear this kind of points of view and what I'm saying, and also on my lively one-half-hour interview series on Mondays at 12 Eastern on close-up television and radio. Our discussions are on timely topics, like how can I help normalize an endurable situation when we find ourselves in during this time? Like I have no desire for sensual or sexual intimacy. It's like someone has flipped the switch and my desire is gone. Guess what? 
that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to talk about this and others um, during these challenging times. And we all need someone to talk to. You and I all know that. We all like someone to talk to. So you can do this with me and you can learn more about me. All you have to do is figure out um, how to get in touch with me. And so I'm going to tell you. You can contact me directly at my website at www.auniquetherapycenter.com or send me an email at lats2000 at aol.com or just call my office line direct. Even though I'm not there and the office is not open, the phone lines are still open and you can still leave a message at 561-300-4066. You know, talking is our, our best way of doing it. We're communicating. You know, you have... You have um, you have thought about this. You have said this to me over and over again. You look forward to broadcasts, podcasts, interview series, videos. Uh, all of them, as you have said, have become an, um, have become necessary, a necessary uh, a timeline, and t- something that you can count on because you can't. There's not much we can count on. Well, you can count on your masks and just wear them, please, and sanitize those hands and social distancing. But you need something to count on. Um, and this is, this is all in order to keep us safe. It's all in order to keep us healthy and to make sense of these uncharted life experiences that we find ourselves in all across our our nation and worldwide. You know, in Florida, what they've done is they've issued what is called the three C's. Well, you know, I had four C's early on in February, but the three C's that we have in Florida in place that they talk about all the time is um, avoid uh, close spaces. Avoid crowded spaces, that means no large gatherings. And three, avoid close contact settings, that's the three C's. And if you remember, my my four C's that I put back in uh, place in February was have common sense. Hey guys, have common sense. Wear those masks, um, have compassion. Um, you know, for everybody, we're all going through this. We are all short of temper at a time. Be courteous and be content with how the things are now. They're not perfect, but how they are now. In I, my opinion, the three and the four C's are going to be a winning plan and will be a huge game tape, uh, changer as we move forward in this pandemic. And what I am reading and what you all have been sharing over the past months and weeks are the issues that are health, financial, job market, political, social. Um, There are questions and so many questions and with very few are very sketchy answers, but we're all searching for reliable guidance. Well, you can find some of the answers here today. Uh, and reasonable guidance by listening to me here on VBM Global Network, TuneIn and iHeartRadio. The phone lines are now open, so feel free to call in at 1-866-451-1451. This is VBM Global, where the world comes to talk, and so do you and I. Again, that number is 1-866-451-1451-READY. Five one. So be ready. Be ready. Okay. What we're talking about today is our relationships. We have found ourselves, you know. And I'm hearing this so often over the over the past weeks, uh, and just as recently as yesterday, we find ourselves drifting further and further and further away from our former life in our society. We are having. Uh, are, we're trying to have ourselves look for guidance, look at some sort of healing, not only from past traumas that we thought we have resolved that keep rising up again at this point, but the current, current traumas that have formed and what seems to be so insurmountable, throwing up roadblocks in our relationships with our partners, siblings, friends, parents, and co-workers. So, so, so what's So what do you think is going on here? Well, I have a perfect idea about that. So we're going to take a break. It's a great place for us to pause. 
You've been listening to It's All About You live on BBM Global Network. Tune in and iHeartRadio. And we're going to talk about what's happening here. Okay? Stay tuned. Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current and concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality? But it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating. Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like... I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, It's like a a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on On the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Welcome back. I'm your host, Dr. Martha, coming to you live from BBM Global Network. Tune in and iHeartRadio. Uh, And the show is It's All About You, and that's what we've been talking about. You know, before the break, I was talking about that, uh, you know, things... um, you know, seem to be coming at us. We have roadblocks that appear to be being thrown in our relationships with our partners and our siblings and friends and co-workers. Um, and we need to stop that erosion because it seems to be happening. And it's across the board, listeners, it is across the board. So what do we have to have in place in order to start stopping the erosion and the roadblocks in our relationships. Well, we need to have awareness. We need to be able to know when we're when it's when it's happening and have some understanding not only of what's going on between you possibly and your partner, but have understanding of how you're responding in the way you are responding. We need to have some sort of acceptance, acceptance that things are not perfect, things are not the same as the way they were, uh, and acceptance that the the people that we are in partnership with, relationship with, they're having the same things uh, going on for them. And responsibility, you know, it's so easy not to want to take responsible. It's not my fault that we got the pandemic, but it, but and it's not my fault that we have to wear a mask. No, but in order to get us out, we need to be responsible and move past it. And we have to have accountability. Well, you know what? I decided to go and um, not wear my mask in public, and uh, I don't know and I just got um, I just got noticed that the person that I was with or the people that I with several of them have tested positive for COVID so we need to take accountability and responsibility for that and um, and how we're thinking about that you know sometimes we're not uh, taking time to think about that and and we have to stop and think about how are we thinking about that at any given moment how are we feeling And how are we acting? You know, in our relationships, especially now in our romantic partnerships and marriages, as someone recently commented, romance is gone, is gone with no hope of romance ever returning. And I think what's going on is we are all 
uh, treating each other very differently in our romantic relationships. And that's what I'm hearing. I don't know if that's what you're hearing. Um, you know, I'm hearing that from uh, people that I am being treated like from my partner like a child. Um, or that our 13 and, and, 12 and 11 year olds are more mature than we are. You know, pandemic, that may have been going on in the relationship anyway. But now that we've had more and more time, more and more downtime, it seems to be coming to uh, the forefront. One person in the adult relationship is acting more and more like a parent and the other one is acting more and more like a child. And when we fight, we end up fighting like two children. Okay, let's, and we're going to look at that. Okay. So, that's what's impacting why, why we're not really caring how our relationships are crumbling. It's because one of us either feels like we're parenting everybody and the other feels like a child. And so you're mixed up with all the children that are in your, your uh, family or in your relationship. So what happened? Well, let's take a step backwards. When we began our, our a romantic relationship, we began it as an adult. It was an adult to adult. Although we start out this way, we often don't find ourselves remaining as two as adults. So we in, so what do we end up with? Well, we end up with parent to child. When the person that's in the parent role, we, we're there because we care for our partner. Um, and that's what you're supposed to do, right, is what I always hear. You know, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be caring about to your partner. Um, you know, but when we do that, what we seem to happen is we overcompensate uh, for our partner's shortcomings. If it, they're rude, if they're cranky, uh, if they're, you know, if they're not helping, you know, we kind of overcompensate. And we then pick up that we're so responsible for their emotions and their reactions and their feelings that we just justify their um, behavior. And then a fight. We start fighting because we, the one who is in the parent role, feels resentful and angry. And then when we fight with our partner, we're at fighting as two children. You know, it seems like as people have commented, our children are more mature than we are when we're fighting. Um, parent to child, um, a one person takes that position, and that position is when I'm the parent, I know better. And so begins the correcting, the criticizing, the disciplining, and the punishing to another adult. The position though which, which is very interesting and that's what's happening a lot is one time one partner is in that position as parent and one is in the child and then it flips and the other is in the parent and has left the child position and the other the parent has left the child the parent position and picked up the child position and what I'm finding it is often that it's not the same issue that it flips back and forth on and then if you add children there is so much confusion because nobody knows who's in charge at what time or on what issue or what situation the confusion between the partners end up as a power struggle which is erupting and you're fighting just like you were fighting as kids who was the older sibling who was the younger sibling um, who didn't want to listen to mom and dad and in this type of situation, what else starts happening? And this is where, where we start seeing the crumbling going on, as I alluded to at the beginning of the broadcast, okay? When one is acting like the parent, the parent is so resentful uh, for, for only caring for the other adult. And they don't, and they don't take care of their needs. So then, what happens with that? Well, this is a great place for us to pause and let you reflect upon what I was talking about earlier. Uh, you've been listening to "It's All About You" coming to you live on BBM Global Network. Tune in and iHeartRadio, and I am your host, Dr. Martha. And when we come back, we'll pick up, and we're going to talk about angry 
like we were when we were children. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success, as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers, as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the B. BBM Global Network. Welcome back. I am your host, Dr. Martha, coming to you live from BBM Global Network. Tune in and iHeartRadio. The show is It's All About You. And before the break, we were talking about, you know, that parent to child role and uh, no one's the adult and then the one that's always acting like the parent, you know, they're they're being resentful because they're caring not only for the other adult. Um But they're also taking care of the children if there happens to be children or grandchildren in the relationship. And they're not taking care of their own needs. And um, we're angry. And there's no other adult um, mate because at your side to help you with shouldering this. Everybody is a child. We end up with having the person in the parent role uh, having children at home and that includes their adult partner and the parent role gets very very tiring and all of us in that role and the people living in it are living with an angry person you know what you felt it you've seen it probably you grew up in some form of that you know and um the partner that's supposed to be the adult partner with us, chooses never to grow up, or at least that's the perception of the person constantly in the parent role. Um, Now, the person who is holding the child position is also getting tired of being always in the child position, being criticized, being disciplined, being being pointed out that they don't uh, do anything wrong. They're corrected. They're scolded. Uh, They're being treated as less than equal in the relationship when they started out as equal partners. Um, They're tired of being controlled or their perception of being controlled not being respected for who they are or appreciated or valued for their contribution in the relationship uh, or what they're doing. Um, And they will gravitate. And this is what's happening. And that's why there's a rise on, I don't care about my relationship. As soon as this is over, I'm going to get a divorce. I'm going to seek separation. Or they're seeking divorce and separation now. They will gravitate to a person who sees them who actually sees them as the adult. Now, this is the person in the child role and value their contribution as an, an adult. Um, then, then that person, as I just alluded to, will leave their child role in that relationship and start a new relationship or look to start a new relationship. And now what happens to the one that's in the parent role when this is going on? Um, they'll be left alone. 
after all their sacrificing and all their overcompensating and all their caregiving to raise the other um, adult partner, um, what happens, and think about this, this is only right, this is what goes on. After all, all children must leave home someday. And that will include our adult partner that we have in a child position. The one who is in the parent role is then left with no appreciation and a bucket, bucket full, or maybe buckets full of resentment. The key is to always be aware um, when, you're, when you are or not and when you are treating your partner as a capable, responsible adult. When you start acting like the parent, or when you, or when you, the other, uh, the other person in relationships starts acting like a teenager, and placing all the responsibility on your uh, partner, what happens? The relationship is very, very unhealthy, and is beginning to crumble, because originally. Um, our partners were originally chosen for, a wonder, for wonderful reasons. For they have strength, of art, their, their compatibility with us, uh, similar values, and that they were there and willing to take responsibility. So that when the differences show up, and they with each other partners, and they will show up. It's because an adult who is responsible for their own thoughts and feelings and needs and intentions and attitudes and behavior. Wow, that was a mouthful. But that's but we're, we have to be responsible in that manner. Remember, you enter that relationship and the relationship that you're currently in for the companionship, for the partnership, for a team player. Um, and this is a healthier role. You communicate and you respectfully negotiate your needs and desire. So each of you will be, um, be happy and take care of your own happiness. And when you do that, uh, you also are aware of your partner and your partner being happy, happy. That becomes a team effort. But sometimes we don't do that. And a lot of times that's not happening. So then what goes on? Well, there's further erosion and the roadblocks have stopped um, have, have stopped and the roadblocks are there and you're stopped, what do we have to do? Like I said earlier, we have to have awareness, understanding, acceptance, responsibility, and accountability and be able to know what we're thinking at any given moment. As an adult, we are responsible for our own thoughts, our feelings, our needs, intentions, attitudes, behaviors that foster happiness for yourself and for your partner. However, many couples in conflict have not that awareness. The underlying pro problem, believe it or not, when this is going on, is the, with sexual desire. Now, uh, I know you're, you're saying, what does that have, one have to do with the other? Well, it really does. You're having you're in that parent-child role or child-to-parent role, and you're having a problem with sexual desire with that partner. When we're in those different roles, that sexual desire fades in one partner, and other things then start to fall apart. No surprise there. Think about that. So, this is what else is what's interfering with relationship happening. Um. Well, you know, it's been reported that over 50% of the couples in their current living uh, situations experience that. Um, this has always um, been talked about and treated when there is a um, loss of sexual desire as a performance issue, and it's not. Uh, if you keep looking at it as a performance issue, it destroys many good and fulfilling romantic relationships. I found this very intriguing as I started thinking about why are people not caring about we're in a pandemic and the relationships are crumbling and they don't care and they just, you know, they just, oh, just leave me alone, I'm going to crawl back into a cave. Well, you know, the situation really began surfacing 
or at least it was starting to be recognized um, in the romantic uh, partner relationships during this pandemic. But what's going on, it was always there, but it was embarrassing, and it, would, and it uh, raised shame and guilt uh, surrounding this type of issue because it's not performance. This is a great place for us to pause take a break here you've been listening to it's all about you with me your host dr martha coming to you live from pbm global network tune in and iheart radio and we're going to talk about this hyperactive sexual desire wow according to the american nurses association there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the united states so where do all these nurses work what kind of roles do they have What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale. An international initiative called Nursing Now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will We'll focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing, Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy EasySense.com and learn how, with your help, we can fight these horrific brain disorders. That's EasySense.com to learn more and help support the Broderick Foundation. Welcome back. It's all about you with me, your host, Dr. Martha, coming to you live from BBM Global Network. Tune in and iHeartRadio. And before the break, we were talking about the situation that is... Um, ruining really uh, and the ability to have good and fulfilling romantic relationships, especially now during this pandemic time. But again, I want to stress that the issue that we're going to be talking about is not performance. Uh, It is about sexual desire. Uh, And it's been around, but it's very embarrassing for someone to talk about, you know, um, I really don't, you know, I don't really have any desire and it's rarely, rarely treated because they always go for the little blue pill or more testosterone or something like that. Um, It's often brought up in couple sessions. I hear this a lot. I've seen it a lot over the course of my time as a professional in the field of family and marriage therapy. And the quotes uh, that I hear are go something like this. I've looked back and, and then I've also, um, paid attention even more so about this during the last uh, eight months is it's quote I have no desire for sensual or sexual intimacy it's like someone has swept a switch my desire is gone our plain and simple doc I have no interest in sex Um, that's those are powerful statements we've either heard them from our family and friends we have even said them or thought them ourselves so, you know, as a, as a researcher and as a therapist, we will often address um, this, we will often address sex as now having to acknowledge and treat this specific condition, this no desire. And it's um, the most common problem as a sexual problem, and it is now really out there in the forefront as a sexual problem. It has been defined as hypoactive sexual desire, or HSD. Again, that's hyper 
active sexual desire. This is defined as no sexual desire. This behavior can go on for months and even years without desire for sexual activity with your partner. As one person said in a session quite recently, despite my best efforts with my partner, you know, to get things going, we, we, we had first gone for a few months without sex, and now it's been years, and it doesn't look like it's coming back. This means that for many people, sexual desire may never return or or has never been there to begin with, and no one has addressed it. A person which with HSD, that's hypoactive sexual desire, it will often focus on other issues that seem more important. So then we go back to how we're being treated in the relationship, you know, Some of the other things that are more important than having the sexual desire for your partner can be finances, job loss, health, caring for an elderly family member. Um, And and another factor is that there is shame and guilt uh, coupled around this. This makes um, hypersensual um, sexual desire one of the most difficult to treat. HSD is a, is treatable, but it is difficult to treat because first you have to find it's there uh, and acknowledge it and uncover it. And um, because, you know, most of the time the people have sound bodies. Um, their bodies are fairly, fairly healthy. Um, the, and the relationship used to be, uh, used to be um, quite active in that manner. Um this relationship now has been devastated by a lot of different things. The relationship has been troubled, and the when what has been devastated is the sex drive, that sexual desire, and it's not because of performance, especially if you had an active sex life before that. Um, when you chronically suppress anger towards another partner, I'm being treated like a child. I don't want to be controlled. Uh, Why do I always have to take all the adult and take up, make up all the responsibilities? That is just to go there and just to talk about that. The one who is in the parent role has been left alone. And after all, they're sacrificing and caregiving to raise the others. And so that's going on there. There's the loss of control or respect might be the suppressed anger and resentment in the relationship um, when you're acting like a teen and you're placing all the other responsibilities on your partner you know that um, you know that the TV had gone out why didn't you go and call the cable company why did you sit there and let it happen and let the other partner go and do that that's abdicating the responsibility you're a responsible partner in the, the situation that can build resentment Once these issues and situations come into play and threaten a healthy sex drive and the lack of intimacy is often aggravated with the problems of HSD and they balloon and balloon and balloon until the relationship becomes so damaged. Um, Further entrenching this um, HSD in the dynamic of the relationship When this occurs, it becomes too embarrassing to seek help. And this is more so for men. You know, um, and even when you're talking to a professional man, they sometimes don't get it because they think it's you're talking about performance. Yeah, and they, they don't ask the questions further from you. It's not that it's performance and realize that it's not the performance. It's something something much deeper and something more different than what's there. The most, um, the others, uh, the others are more concerned on the immediate family members. We're focusing on that. Okay, so you've got your partner who's wanting uh, more sensual and sexual intimacy, and you're not wanting to be there. And they're focusing on something else that's more important, like uh, job crisis, um, uh, the off-putting. Um, dealing with our loss of healthy libidos. We don't even think about that. Perhaps the, perhaps what I'm thinking is most uh, troubling. And, you know, we're going to tr- uh, stop here. And we're going to pause. 
But there's something that's more troubling. You've been listening to It's All About You live on BBM Global Network. Tune in and iHeartRadio with me, your host. And we're going to look at what is the most troubling thing in this situation. So keep listening. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern. Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Do you want to remove unconscious beliefs, programs, and energy quickly? Are you looking to actively receive messages, activations, initiations, and gifts from your higher self? If so, tune in to A Call to Heal, a show that begins with a channeled, guided meditation for expansion and upliftment. Listen to Carolee and Julia deliver intuitive messages and energies. These powerful readings affect the energy bodies of all who listen. A Call to Heal radically helps those who listen to integrate their shadow and consciously expand their light body. Don't miss your opportunity to call in and facilitate a healing for yourself and the world. Listen to A Call to Heal, Monday nights on the BBM Global Network. Be the change you wish to see and make your call to heal. Welcome back. It's all about you with me, your host, Dr. Martha, coming to you live from BBM Global Network, tune in and iHeartRadio. And when we paused, I was talking to you uh, about what could possibly be the most troubling. Well, you know, um, HSD, um, that um, lack of sexual desire, um, has been around for a long time. But we had so much more that we were doing outside. We had other diversions that we really weren't paying that much attention to it. Or if we did, it was intermittent. Um, but what what is the most troubling part of that about it is that people who are in a relationship with no um, sexual desire become so used to not having um no, that desire, that loss of sexual desire, um, that they no longer even miss it. Um, and they possibly ignore it. Off, and the other partner will put it off and put it off addressing until it comes to a boiling point. And then that partner explodes. And it's like we're on, a, we're on this roller coaster and we're having this, um, this argument. You know, um, those individuals that lack the desi- lack that desire in this case, um, it's the most se- it becomes the most severe and it's m- the most difficult. So, in other words, if you've had this lack of sexual desire, and it may have showed up in your first relationship, but you never identified it. But then you're in this wonderful relationship, this new relationship, there was a sexual desire. And then all of a sudden, we're back to you're not having sexual desire for your partner, it's not there. Um, that means that it's severe, you've reverted back, it's a default setting that's there. And it's ruining a good relationship or a relationship that started out as something much better than what you ever thought about. And then it's like, oh my gosh, it's deja vu, I'm back in the same relationship. So those become, that's become something that's very, um, very, very important. And we need to look at it. Sadly, though, um, it's a very treatable problem, sexual problem, and yet people are not availing themselves uh, for treatment. Uh, they just find ways to, um, they just find ways just to cope with it or just kind of sail through. But if they found themselves in treatment and they would go to treatment, they may find other ways to adjust. 
like cuddling is good, like, uh, you know, sometimes you just have to just keep at it to see that, that both of you, there's that melting in you, um, there's a relationship that is there. The relationship um, can survive, but then there are other relationships that will not survive the strain, and the relationship then will be cut short. And why is that? That's because both parties have given up. That's because uh, the other party keeps saying that this is an issue for that p- person, and it's not being addressed because it's of no concern for the person that has the HSD. You know, what we have here is time on our hands and being able to reflect this. Now, there's been problems in relationship before that, before the COVID. But what we've had is we've had more time on our hands now to reflect. We also are not doing our our usual diversions that we had, like I'll stay over time for work or I'll pick up that extra shift or whatever, and I'll just be so tired. As one person said, you know, it was never a real problem when I was outside and I was commuting back and forth, and then all of a sudden uh, I'm not commuting back and forth and I'm in the house and I'm getting more sleep, and it never was a problem because I would come home and I'd be too exhausted or we'd be having to do something for my um, or for our elderly parents or my, our children or our grandchildren, and that was never a thing. And it was just this is what the way it was. Was you got older, uh, the sexual desire is gone. Um, but they're finding that it's not the case. That sometimes it's just we're we're just so used to it, and now it's like I want something different. And so now we're starting to change the dynamic of the relationship, and that can become troubling. Um, very much so in in all of the situations that we have in our relationship. Um, this has been this has been occurring in relationships long before the um, the COVID nineteen has raised its its ugly face and made entry here in in um, our country. And I'll put a little plug in here: wear your mask, social distance, and sanitize. But luckily or unluckily, this will continue to occur. Now we can continue to ignore it, or we can continue to go after it and figure out how to change it. Um, but then we also have other things that have come in. We are now more um, more ridden with fear, we're stressed. Um, as we just discussed, our relationships are strained and they're crumbling. Uh, people keep telling me uh, that they feel lethargic. They have little or no interest in the intimacy in intimacy at all. But then, when we explore it even further, it's been that way for years. Um, they feel like they're chronically stressed and saying over and over again, "What is the use, Doctor Lats? What do I have to look forward to?" Um, I have so. I have so many fears. I have the fears of leaving my house now. I have the fears of, am I going to send my kids or my grandkids back to school in class learning? And what are we going to do about that? You know, am I going to go to the grocery store? What hours should I take? And are there going to be social distancing and masks? And well, you know, it's overwhelming to be an adult in this type of situation. Um, and I just wish that I had a partner that would help out. There we have that child-parent dynamic that is going on and what gives and what's happening here and what's, what, are we, what are we thinking about over and over and over again, you know? Well, again, I'm going to go back to our brain to help us which, with HSD. There are people out there that you can talk to. There are people out there that you can have a conversation with, and they are professionals, okay? Part of our brain um, that helps us distinguish between safe and danger, reasonable and unreasonable, being a grown-up or a child has completely shut off, you know? Um, and you're all in, I, I'm in crisis, and I, don't, and I have to have the energy to fight or flight. 
This is a great place for us to pause. You've been listening to is all about you with me, your host, Dr. Martha, coming to you live on BBM Global. Tune in and iHeartRadio. Keep listening, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more. The opiate epidemic has reached crisis levels, and with so many families affected by addiction, opiate-related drug overdoses, and death, the time is now to have a real constructive conversation about addiction that could lead to better prevention, treatment, and recovery. Alan Charles, author and keynote speaker on drug abuse and prevention, presents The Alan Charles Show. Alan brings a message of hope, sharing his unbelievable story of surviving a 24-year addiction to cocaine and highlights from his memoir, Walking Out the Other Side, an addict's journey from loneliness to life. His raw honesty and courageous heart breaks the stigma of addiction and offers a unique perspective into the mind of an addict. Join Alan each week as he brings his listeners to a true understanding of the grip of addiction. It is only with this understanding that we can begin to heal. The Alan Charles Show, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network. Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current and concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. Welcome back. I'm your host, Dr. Martha. The show is It's All About You, coming to you live from BBM Global Network, doing it, and iHeartRadio. And before the break, we were talking about our brain and how our brain is in overload uh, with everything that we have to think about. Um, we're trying to distinguish what's, what's a danger and what's safe, and you can see that being played out. Uh, all across the nation, what's reasonable and what's unreasonable. Um, uh, You know, being a, uh, shall I be a grown-up or shall I be a child? And that all has shut off. We don't know what to do with it. Um, I'm thinking, as I said before, that we're holding on to much more of our crisis energy, fight or flight mode. Um, And our brains are designed just to hold just so much of that and to deal with it. And then our whole body, as you know, people have been explaining, feel fatigued and tired. Um, Know that you're not alone and there are professionals out there ready to help. All you have to do is research some in your area, Um, some of the different um, church organizations, as well as what is the mental health organization from state to state and county to county. Look it up and see what's available for counseling. You could also, if you want to talk to me, you can check out my website at www.auniquetherapycenter.com. Send me an email, as I talked to you before, at last 2000 or we can, uh, so that we can talk. But in... Um, the meantime, I want you to look closer at your boundaries and um, what what feels like it's broken. I think it's worthy to consider all of your possibilities. Um, you know, f- f- finding that there's there's going to be new boundaries professionally. There's going to be new boundaries per, uh, personally, and you're not the only one because they're being reset uh, daily. Uh, with agendas not in line with our own agendas. We are all finding that we are at least, at the very least, annoyed. We're all finding that we are a little bit more argumentative or combative than normal. Uh, There is fear, there is anger. Um, And what we're trying to do is we're trying to how to be kind to each other and to to ourselves. 
and, and be very and, and be compassionate. You know, when you know, when a hug, and that's what you want is a hug, but you, you're so used to not getting the hugs, or you're so used to, even if your partner is not sent, has a sensual or sexual desire, uh, you were getting your hugs elsewhere by coworkers, by nieces, nephews, moms, and dads, whatever. But now you're, you're, you're feeling it even more so. It's normal, it's natural. It's a place where you can, the, a dialogue can help. And there are a lot of professionals out there that you can do a 10 or 15 minute consultation with them and talk to them about what's, what's happening in the relationship. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's been, it been around uh, a long time. It's uh, unfortunately a therapist, are just paying much more attention to it now and not performance. You know, we have all said that podcast and uh, broadcast and everything are important. Always know that you can re-listen to any of my broadcasts that I have had over the course of the time. And I've been um, on the air with BBM Global for a long time, 116 shows, can you believe that? Uh, and you can re- you can listen to them uh, at any time on BBM Global. Um, you can also uh, hear them on i iHeart. You can also there's they're they're out there. So just go and take a, a look at it and see what's going on. State um, you know please please don't parent your partner. And don't act like a child to your partner. It's much more fun to be an adult. Wear a mask, social distance, continue to be safe during these wild, wacky, and wonky times. And it's all an interesting point of view. So until next time, thanks for listening to It's All About You, live from BBM Global Network. Tune in and iHeartRadio. Saying goodbye until you and I say hello again. Next Thursday at 1 o'clock, live on BBM Global. Tune in and iHeartRadio. You've been listening to It's All About You with your host, Dr. Martha Latz. Join us next week as we explore solutions and resolutions to some of your most challenging moments on Dr. Martha Latz, It's All About You. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.